In recent videos, we've looked at how to use custom post types and loop templates or single post templates to create lots more functionality on your site with full design control and power and options and also by minimizing how many plugins you need in your WordPress setup. So all of those are wins. We've looked at how to create team profiles or testimonials. And in this video, we're going to look at using custom post types for portfolio items. So creating a portfolio section on your website. But we're going to take this opportunity to look at conditional display within your templates. And what I mean by that is that there are elements in your display that you may want to display uh, according to whether one of the custom fields has a value or has a particular value. Now I'll show you what I mean and then we'll go into the tutorial on this one. But once you grasp how to do this, you open up so many opportunities about how dynamic your site will look. And it's really something that will empower you from design to development. So although we'll look at some portfolio ideas, uh, let's start with a previous project of ours, the uh, Team Profile CPT. And uh, so let's have a look at David here. And the team profile CPT goes through to a single post template as a portfolio would. And what we can see from here is that there might be elements about David and his particular profile that don't have a value. So we have a bunch of template elements on David's profile here, and he might not actually have as a value for all of these. So these are feeding through obviously from his edit post page and where we place in values, uh, it's meant to show up on the template on the front. Now let's have a look at this, for example, on email, Twitter and Insta, he doesn't actually have any values, but it is displaying anyway. And that's bad, that's something we don't want. It is a template element that we need there in case somebody else such as Alice Wonderland has an email account. But for David, we don't want it to display. What about as well if uh, David is particularly quiet and he's not really heard saying anything? Well, if we pop along and we you know, remove his favorite saying and update, that's fine, the blue text is going to disappear. But if I refresh, we've still got this element here, which is displaying, and that's a bit of a problem. We don't actually want that. So I'm gonna chuck his favorite saying back just so that it's there for the future. But this is an example of when we would like conditional display. We would like this to display if it has a value in the edit post page. Looking at portfolios, and let's apply this to portfolios, obviously now looking at the other videos, you know why you need a CPT and uh, how to create one and how to start playing with the templates for loop and grid and single post, okay? So you, you know how to create this sort of thing. Um, and by the way, I'm like the cliche plumber who has a broken toilet at home. My portfolio design is shocking. It should be something more dynamic like this, I'm sure. But um, hey, that's that's the world we live in. Um, it's, a, it's a project waiting for me. But uh, we do have some components here that I'd like to share. So we've, we've got here a website for local furniture maker. Popping along, this is another portfolio item for a fitness site that I've done. And you might notice some differences here. We don't have a live link, for example. Now, obviously, this is feeding through from the uh, edit post page and there's a value here, if I can only find it, other site link, and this has a value. Now, when it has a value, this is showing up. So again, it's conditional display. I don't want to have a live link to this fitness site, not because it's bad, but because um, the owner has now made design decisions that don't reflect my choices. And so it doesn't reflect my work anymore. And so I wouldn't like to have a live link. Whereas this one, I'm quite happy for people to go and have a little peek and think, all right, Chris made this website. Um, that being said, side note, uh, you shouldn't have any outbound links. Uh, this should not be there and it won't be there after a this tutorial. Um, but it was a good example of, of when you might need conditional display in a portfolio. Now, I was actually asked about this in the comments to another CPT video, but what somebody else has been trying to achieve is how to display live site or demo site, something similar to that nature. This site is actually a demo site, it's one I've made just to show you what I might come up with in your own project. And so I would like it to say, hey, this is a demo site. Uh, whereas the others, we need something that indicates it's a live site. Now that is actually displaying uh, because of this live or demo. So we're not displaying something conditionally 
if it has a value, this is conditional on what value is given to that field, to that ACF field. And it's, it's another example of how we might do it. So let's have a look at how to actually pull this off. So popping along to the single post template, this does work in loop templates also, by the way. Uh, we need to find a way to display things conditionally. Now that would often be a plugin. Um, I just want to say now that Elementor Pro has brought in this functionality recently. Um, I think they're still working out kinks. It doesn't have all of the options uh, that you might on other plugins, but I think now it has everything you need. And although I'm still seeing some glitches, I'm, I'm reasonably confident now to use it on a live site. That being said, I've always had more confidence in this plugin here. And if you experience any issues with Elementor Pro's display conditions, get this plugin. It has a ton of features and it's really easy to use. So um, I will show you how to use Elementor Pro's display conditions in this one. But if you have issues, take a look at this plugin. So back to the single post template, this is the element I would like to uh, put a, a display condition on. And so if we select the element and then pop along to advanced and scroll down and you're going to see display conditions. Now I already have one on here, uh, but you click this and uh, they've recently improved the interface. I'm glad to see it's, it's taking a bit more from breakdowns, I think. And what we have here is dynamic tags. Um, we have lots of other sort of conditions that we can set, but to apply to an ACF field, as we have in our CPT, we want to use dynamic tags. Uh, this is the name of the field. So um, if I was to pop along to the actual fields, you can see lie, oh, not that one, other site link, other site link. All right, so the name of the field, you can get that here if it's not, um, if it's something you're not understanding, like what did I call it? That's where you go and get it. I'm sure Elementor will make that a bit more friendly and I'd prefer to see the names personally, but this is how you can be really specific. So dynamic tags, other site link is not empty. So the, all, the only condition is that there is a value in there. Now, this is for a, a link obviously, and that value could be LLL or something, or just a few letters, but this is an easy way to set this up. So that is not empty, and then you would save. Okay, so that is actually how simple that is. So just so that I'm showing you how to do it, if we pop along back to David's profile here, and this is not a portfolio, obviously, what I would like is for this to display if there is a value in here and not otherwise. Now, obviously this element, if it's empty, nothing will display. I actually want to add the display condition to this container. Uh, because I would like this whole container not to show up and therefore these not to show up. I could select this separate item and put the, the display condition onto that, but I want to show you that you can also use it on containers. So display condition, add condition, dynamic tags. I need to now find that uh, ACF field. So favorite saying, and then is not empty. Okay, so if this field is not empty, I would like to display it. Okay, save and continue and update. And now if we go along to David's profile and I'm gonna refresh the page, it's showing up because <laughs> it does have a value. But if we pop along here and now remove that and update and then refresh, we should not only see that blue line disappear, but the entire container. So job done, that is a, a conditional display applied. Okay, let's have a look at something else. Let's have a look at displaying something with a particular value. Okay, so this is, again, is really, really simple. What I've done here is I've got a live site heading and uh, I would obviously like this to display if this field has live checked, all right? So very simple, if live is checked, then I would like that to, do, to display. So pop along, select the elements, go to the advanced tab, display conditions, and dynamic tags, live or demo, name of the field, is live. Okay, so that is the actual value that is applied to the field. If we pop along to the fields and uh, live or demo, Let's just have a closer look so you'll always know we've got the choices live demo. This is actually what is output, okay? So we're returning the value. And so 
Elementor is saying, okay, if the value is live, I'm going to display this. So then we have this really convenient checkbox or radio button functionality in our edit post. It's much simpler for a client especially. All right, so what about this one? Well, you're probably quite familiar now. Uh, select the element, advanced, display conditions. We've got dynamic tags, live or demo contains demo. Okay, so it's only going to display one of those because the field can only have one value. It's a radio button. Okay, so that works really well. Now, you don't have to just apply this to boring headings and, and have like little written text or anything. You can have a lot of fun with your design elements. So, I mean, you can use icons for this. You can make a custom icon and set that display condition to uh, an icon. So an, an icon looks a bit more picturesque. Or you can have a little bit more fun with divs. You can, uh, you can create circular divs and make little badges. And they only apply if there's a checkbox uh, checked or radio button checked in the actual edit post page. So here we have much the same live site demo site. It's the equivalent of these headings and we just need to set appropriate display conditions. So I've got the live site selected. Um, all I have here, by the way, is um, I showed you how to make circles in the uh, hover images uh, tutorial if you want to have a look at that. Um, but what we have here is an absolute position div. I've rounded the corners so that it's a nice circle and added a heading into the middle of it and given it a color. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I've also rotated it a little bit. And all we need to do is add a display condition. So display condition, add condition, and dynamic tag. We are looking for live or demo field, which is what we've set previously. So live or demo, there we go and we would like it to have the value of live. That's the output. Save and close. And this one also, we're going to set the display condition, add. And again, this is how simple it is. And uh, you would already have grasped this, I'm sure, and you're waiting for me to get the end of showing you how to do it again. Um, demo, there we go. And don't forget that you can add lots of nice little um, sort of, this was, This is a live site, let's really draw attention to that. Um, motion effects, entrance, let's make it bounce in. Bedoying, update. Okay, so let's have a look at how this uh, works throughout these, this portfolio. Refresh the page. And look at that, it's a live site badge that we've just created there. Um, let's move along, personal training. This was, if you recall, also a live site, um, but we've got that showing here and no link. So that's all good conditional display. And pop along to the bridal uh, demo site and there we go, we've got the demo site. So that is how you can use conditional display in your templates coupled with custom post types ACF fields and then loop templates, loop grids, loop carousels and uh, single post templates with conditional display. There's just no end to what you can do. Um, your site can become very dynamic and more importantly, fewer plugins and easier editing capabilities for yourself or for your client. It saves time for everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, please check out my most recent videos on custom post types and any of the other most recent videos. And if you have anything you're kind of curious about being able to do, let me know in the comments below and uh, I'll see if I can rock out a tutorial for it. And who says rock out a tutorial for it? Well, apparently me. Anyway, like, subscribe and I'll see you soon. Thanks.